Today we're gonna make turkey pot pie. You mean chicken pot pie? No, we're using leftover turkey. But it's called chicken pot pie. So our holiday turkeys are huge and they produce tons of leftovers. And as time goes on, those leftovers are gonna get drier and drier. And this recipe solves that problem by just soaking the whole thing in gravy. The right solution. So pull out your leftovers and let's make turkey pot pie with a homemade crust. I would like to explore pie crust with you another day, but for today, we're going to make a simple butter pie crust in the food processor. I would like you to measure 337 grams of flour into the food processor bowl. To that, we're gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. Because we're making a savory pie, I want my crust to have a nice savory flavor. 337 grams and salt. Some salt. We are making a double crusted pie, so this is a double recipe of pie crust, which means we need two full sticks of cold butter. We use cold butter in flaky pastries so that we create those layers and little bubbles inside that make the flake. Cut that up into... Into chunks. We just don't want whole sticks in there. Food processor pie crust couldn't be simpler, but there is a danger that you would over mix it. We don't want all of this cold butter to just turn to a paste in here with the flour. We actually want there to still be chunks of butter inside, so we don't want to over blend it. Just to coat this butter in a little bit of flour, I'm going to pulse twice. That's it. Now we're going to use ice cold water to turn this into a dough. I'm looking at about eight tablespoons, which is about half a cup for this double recipe, but sometimes it takes more or less. You're purposely avoiding the ice? I am, I'm leaving the ice out. Your food processor probably has something similar, but there's a little pour spout here that you can safely run the machine and pour in at the same time. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to start the machine and simultaneously drizzle in this ice cold water until this forms a dough. And then we stop, no more. It changed sounds and that's good. The amount of water that you need will depend on the temperature outside, it will depend on the humidity, so this changes from time to time. All right, so I'm looking for a dough that sticks together when I press it, but I don't want it to be a soggy, wet glob either. It shouldn't really stick to your fingers. If it's sticking to your fingers, it's too wet. You've overdone it. The next step for this pie crust is to divide this dough into two pieces. We're going to roll them out. You don't have to, you could pat them into discs and refrigerate them for a little while, but I'm going to roll mine flat because I find it easier. Or if you wanted to roll them to shot putts. I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, I thought discus and then shot putt. Wow. <laughs> Just a little, little Olympic joke for you there. First, we're going to divide the dough in half, roughly. Like a dough custody battle. We divided our dough in half to make two pie crusts, and now we're just going to pat them into a disc. Oh, it's cold. Good, it should be roughly round at this point. Then you're going to cover it with the other paper. Why didn't we do that first and then pat it down? You could. I'm going to use a rolling pin to roll this into roughly a 13 to 14 inch circle. Your circle can be a little smaller because it will be the top crust. Oh, mine's on top? That means people will see it. Good point. Maybe we'll decide after. Good idea. So to roll a circle, you need to constantly rotate either your rolling pin or your dough so that you don't end up with corners. Start in the middle and roll one direction lightly and then come back to the middle and roll the other. You could try. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, I've made a divot. Yeah, you pressed too hard, it's okay. Okay. Now be sure to turn your dough, otherwise you'll end up with squares and wonky ovals. And So we want this to be relatively thin, quarter of an inch or less. How you doing? Mediocre at best. Oh my gosh, it's supposed to be that big? Mine will be, yours. Well, mine seems really lumpy. It shouldn't be. No, I, I gathered that. <laughs> Thank you. It's supposed to make that clanking noise, right? Oh. <laughs> pie crusts need to chill. It's important that the water be absorbed by the flour and <coughs> it's important that the water be absorbed by the flour and that the butter stays really cold. So I'm going to stack these and put them in the freezer while I work on the rest of the pie. While the pie crusts are in the freezer, we will prepare the filling. This is where you raid your fridge for all of your leftovers. Not all of them. Oh, maybe not all. You can use any meats that you have left over as well as vegetables. I would stay clear of mashed potatoes and stuffing or dressing. 
those probably don't belong in a turkey pot pie. But if you do it, drop a comment below, let us know. Definitely. We have smoked turkey leftovers, so I'm going to have Doug trim them to bite-sized pieces. We are making a deep dish pie. This is a nine inch pie plate. Uh, it happens to be ceramic, but you could use glass. If you don't have a deep dish pie, you would probably want to use a springform pan instead. We're looking to fill about half of this with turkey, so keep that in mind while you're trimming your meat. You can pull any skin off that didn't get pulled off in the bird picking. So is this about the right size? Yes, that size or even a little larger, whatever you're comfortable putting on your fork. This is where we're going to make a gravy for our pie. I'm going to start with a simple bechamel. That's with a stick of butter, that's half a cup. You said a bechamel, what is that? Bechamel starts with a roux, that is a butter and equal parts flour, added to that some cream. And then we'll add some chicken stock. Now the butter is melted and we'll add an equal part flour. Whisk all the lumps out and let it bubble a little bit to cook that flour. To this we'll add half a cup of heavy cream and one cup of chicken stock. Once this thickens, we'll add another cup of chicken stock. Well, one nice thing about this hot plate is you can guarantee you're not gonna cook it too fast. No. Okay, this has gotten a little thick, so I'm gonna add a little more chicken stock. Wait, are you just saying we cooked it too fast? No, it's Okay. Just... All right, I'd like you to whisk that while I prepare some spices. We're gonna use a little cracked pepper, salt. I'm using smoked turkey, so I'm gonna go a little easy on the salt for now because the smoked turkey can make it a little too salty on the other side. I'm gonna use about a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of dill weed, I have dried parsley today, but you could certainly use fresh. And a half teaspoon of garlic powder. We can add the turkey now, and this would be a good time to add your vegetables as well. Now, I'm going to use frozen peas and carrots because that is classic pot pie. But if you've got leftover green beans, that might be a good addition. Maybe you have some other leftover vegetables. Leftover corn, which we never have. Diced peas and carrots from a freezer bag. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Oh, it's getting thick. It is getting thick. Chicken stock, if you notice, it's getting a little thick. Yes. I'm going to taste this so that we can adjust the spices as needed. I think I'm gonna leave the salt. If this were on my plate, I would go ahead and salt it a little more. But I noticed that smoked turkey really does seep some of that salt out into the gravy as it cooks in the oven. So I think this is good. We'll set this aside for now while we prepare our pie, pie shells. We'll set this aside for now while we prepare our... And what are we doing to... Do? Prepare our pie... Prepare, prepare... Prepare the... So we're... Okay, so this is done, so we're gonna go ahead and set it aside while we prepare to put our pie crusts in our pie pan. <laughs> Peter Pepper, Peter Pepper, Peter Peppers. Go ahead and peel the top paper off, flip it over and peel the other side. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is put the bottom crust, and I think we'll use mine, it's a little larger. So we just need it to, of course, cover the bottom of the pan and up the sides a little bit over the edge. The pie crust softened very quickly. This was firm and flat just a minute or two ago. So as it sits on the counter, it does soften up. I do not wanna push this pie crust into the pie pan. I want to just lift up the edges and let gravity help it. If I push on it too much, I may tear it, or worse, if I stretch it, it will shrink as it bakes. So as this comes just a little closer to room temperature, it will droop into the pie pan and we'll be ready for filling. Okay, this is about as soft as it needs to be for me to tuck it into the corners. Again, avoid stretching the pie crust. And we'll just drape this over the edge. I'll go get the filling and we'll put it inside. Just tuck it in and now we're ready for your pie crust on top. Put your hand underneath, flip it over right on top. Try to center it as best you can. It's not ideal. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not ideal. I, that's not what I meant to okay. say. Okay, so just plop it. Yep, just plop it over, yeah. There you Nailed go. it. Nailed it. All right, we'll give that another try. <laughs> we do want to cover all the filling. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to do half the pie and you're going to do the other half, okay? <laughs> now you can use a knife or kitchen scissors. Um, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of extra off the side, but I like a thick edge crust. So I tend to just push it together and flip it underneath until it rests on top. So I kind of flip that top crust underneath the edge of the bottom. There are a large number of ways that you could finish the edge. So I'm going to just pinch with my thumbs like this against the edge of the pie plate. This helps seal it and gives it a nice pretty edge. All right, your turn to do the other half. That looks great. Now we just need a sharp knife to make some vents. Okay, so I'm just going to make four vents in the top just so some steam can release. 
The pie crust on top is already softening from that warm filling. That will allow steam to release and hopefully prevent the sauce from bubbling out of the edges. If we've sealed the edges well, it won't bubble over. But just to be safe, I'm gonna put a sheet pan underneath, bake it at 400 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes until this crust is a deep golden brown. It's ready to go in. Well, Lisa's getting that out of the oven. If you like what you've seen so far, hit the thumbs up. If you want to stick around for more fun and kitchen education and recipes, hit subscribe. Let's take a look at this thing. This is bubbly and delicious. It sounds wonderful. It smells wonderful. Look at that golden brown crust. I want to make it so we can hear. I want to make dang sure. It looks like both of us, on both halves of the pie, we were able to achieve a good seal. There were no leaks in the oven. Should we cut it open? Yes. Are supposed to let it cool or anything? Um, you could let it sit for about five minutes, but I'm impatient. Nice flaky crust. <laughs> that crust on the bottom is nice and golden brown as well. The top crust is golden brown. So this looks and smells amazing, um, but the pie crust might be a little daunting for new folks. Is there a way to make this easier? Sure, if you have never done a pie crust before and this seems a little scary, or if you're just done cooking the week after holidays, you could buy a store-bought crust, line it in a pie pan, use that same filling, and put another crust on top, and it would still be delicious. Want to give it a go? I do. Fork, please. It's good. We should have added more salt. But... Should have added more salt. I'm so glad we made this. <laughs> this is really good. I'm gonna go finish this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. See you next time.